everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, this afternoon's webinar, or at least it's afternoon here in the UK. I think uh, some of you are joining us from all oh, different parts of the world, so it could be morning or even late evening, but wherever you are, um, welcome. And apologies for the slight delay in starting, but um, David's system crashed. So he's had to sort of rebuild everything, which is really annoying. Anyway, before we start, as usual, may I draw your attention to the uh, disclaimer that I know you can see on the screen. As you know, trading can be a very risky business. So please, 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 I beg you, do not, do not ever use money that you cannot afford to lose. OK, now we're actually going straight to my Ninja Trader um, uh, screen, um, my setup that I've got here, uh, because, 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 uh, first of all, it's been a, fa a fascinating chart to look at for all sorts of different reasons. Um, those of you who uh, read my um, Forex page and uh, the various bits of other people, uh, bits of things that I put up on the internet either through Twitter, will know that um, I have made a point of saying it is December. December is traditionally a month where liquidity starts to drain away, participation uh, drains away from the market, making price action more volatile than one would expect. And when you add this uh, uh, this sort of seasonal volatility, if you like, to what is happening in the markets anyway, in, 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 the, um, in the sense of the continued uncertainty with regards to the trade uh, tariff uh, business with uh, China and the US and, and everything else. And no one really wants um, a, a repeat of what happened in the run-up last year to Christmas, where we had a huge uh, sort of shock and a, and, uh, and, and a big fall. Um, it did actually recover. You only have to look at the, at, obviously, at the monthly chart for last year. You can see there's, there's a heck of a lot of buying came in. And it really set the stage for the recovery and the, the highs that we've seen in, in US equities and the indices. So when you have this kind of market condition, um, you've got, so we've got sentiment that we have to sort of try and get a handle on. We then have got volatility that we have to deal with. And with volatility comes momentum, comes activity. Some of it will be, you know, you've, you've got to try and sort of judge, is it going to come in now? What's going to happen? What's going to, you know, and what about my positions? Do I, um, you know, should I give a thought to perhaps modifying the my position size? The answer is yes. Uh, because, you know, when you're in a trading environment that we have at the moment, trading opportunities aren't there. And if you use volume price analysis, and I, I can see um, we've, I've, we've got attendees who have either uh, bought the books and also supplemented the books with the indicators and also supplemented that further with the Forex program. Because the Forex program, you think, well, why am I talking about Forex when we're going to talk about futures? And that is because all the markets are connected. You know, what happens in one market may ha may influence what is going to happen in another. But more importantly, what happens in one market can often signal what is likely to happen in another. And I'm actually going to start with a quick photo that I've got here. It's a, a screenshot for the dollar. Um, where have I got here? Oh, I've got pound Aussie. I've got the wrong one. I'm so sorry. Uh, there's me saying I've got the, the photo. What I need to find very quickly is actually my post on the dollar yen. And in fact, the best place to go and have a look at it is on my site. Now, this, this was done at uh, the beginning of the week. Here we are. And what it does is this is the chart for the dollar yen and it's all annotated and you can read it on the on on the blog and basically it was kind of a prelude to the, the you know the big sort of you know, quite sort of severe sell-off that we had on Monday and Tuesday based on volume price analysis and actually using the tools that we have developed for uh, Ninja Trader. And why do we know? Why, you know, what is it telling us? Well, the chart, the annotation says it all. Note the anomaly, the volume, volume look, looks average. Where were the buyers actually stepping in into this sort of trend higher that we can see here before the, uh, before the fall? This candle here, this little candle here, this uh, looks like um, it's um, a sort of miniature shooting star. Look at the volume underneath it. It's got a wick to the top and then it rolled over. Now, crucially, what then that happened in the indices, every, you know, markets said, oh, this you know, is going to be a repeat of what happened 
last uh, December. That's it. The sky has fallen in. You know, the big short is, is finally here. But what actually happened, if we go to the next uh, um, blog post, and this was done on Tuesday. This was happened in, in here we are, quickly. And this is the candle pattern that we had. Uh, this was actually on the YM, but it's very similar on the NQ and the S. And what happened? This was the reversal lower, which was already sort of you like signalled by VPA uh, last week. What we saw on the on the dollar yen, the dollar yen is a kind of proxy for sentiment and, uh, in the markets anyway. What do we have? We have these two big candles, and then on the Tuesday we had the volatility triggered. And look at the volume that came in. It's absolutely extre extreme on that wick there, which tells us that the buyers did come in. And in fact, if we look at the uh, the NQ, which is one I've got here at the moment, David's got the ES, and that's the candle. No volatility trigger on the NQ. This is the extreme volume that came in, pushed the price up. Lo and behold, everyone who said, oh, that's it, the sky's falling in, we said the day before it actually happened, there's going to be buying, the market's going up. And what did happen? The market did actually go up. So looking at cross markets, looking at for clues as what to, uh, with regard to sentiment, using VPA to actually establish what the market is doing and because it's going to anticipate what is likely to happen. Hey, listen, sometimes things happen totally unexpected. Nothing is 100% foolproof in this business, but it is a methodology. Once you get to grips with it and you really understand the relationship between price action and volume and not just the volume in terms of the up down volume that we see at the bottom of the chart, but actually the volume in terms of what we call transacted volume. This is the volume on this histogram that we see here with the volume point of control. We can see this chart has actually been, it's a huge break away from the VPOC back here, way, way down at 7,000, just after 7,700. This was the, if you like, uh, on the daily chart, it's what we call the fulcrum of the chart. There's elements of market profile here. And we've had this massive breakaway, buying, 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 Obviously, reached a you know came to, come to a point where you know market was you know was getting a bit exhausted. I mean, look at the length of of this trend higher. Lots of support and resistance in terms of price based support and resistance. But with the volume point of control, what we're looking at is we're looking at volume, price, and time because what it does it also creates its own uh, support and resistance as a but based with volume but including volume. Uh, a time and uh, price, um, time and volume. Now, getting right back down to the, you know, the the, the time frames that the vast majority of tra uh, day traders trade. What I've got here, I've got the minute, I've got the three minute, I've got the ten, I've got the hour, and I've got, as I said, I've got this daily chart here. Right. Let's just pick up on the. Uh, let's go to the ten minute chart first of all, because this is uh, quite interesting. This is prior to. This is the the open. Uh, the usual volatility, the the the, uh, the surge of of activity and volume that actually comes in. But if you look to the left of the chart, we actually had uh, the VPOC here in the eight three three hundred and odd, what have you, and we actually had had a very nice run up in Globex. When we then we had this volatility trigger uh, um, uh, come into the chart, and we can see here the volatility is the indicator here. It's based on average true range, so you have these little purple arrows. So what that tells us, we know that the chances are the price will retrace to within the spread of the candle, possibly congest, could go further. The volatility candle of itself, the high and the low of the candle, also then um, uh, gives us another level of support and resistance. So what it tells us is there's been an inrush of activity on this candle. The price has been pushed up. There's been a wick, but it's, if you like, the, the momentum then goes out of the move and the price then, as we've seen here, it kind of tried to rise. It never really got beyond the high of the candle. And we had a kind of a drift lower until we got to the start of the US session. And what 
tends to happen is with traders that start with a session, they don't really pay much attention to what has gone on before, not understanding volatility, volatility candles, and uh, you know the, the the chart from a VPA perspective. There have been an awful lot of you know buys. Oh, market's been going up, great. You know the, the swoon is over. They jump in and suddenly down it comes and everybody gets trapped onto the wrong side of the market. Now, the key level on this is, again, the volume point of control. And in fact, it's had a, it's come off from there all the way down through this key support level here. And, uh, and that actually broke through, but the, some buying has come in and now it's going back up again. Now, so that's just on the 10 minute to give us some context. Now, what I've done here on the one minute chart um, is, We've actually developed a particular indicator to help us, if you like, judge the speed, momentum, activity that's coming into the market using tick data. These numbers that are coming through at the moment here, it's measuring the activity. That's what tick is. I mean, the volume is activity, is participation. And what it does, it's just another bit of information that you can have in background to, to give you a sense of whether the price action you see on the chart, you, yes, you, you read it in conjunction with the volume underneath it, but it gives you a sense of whether it's actually genuine from a, a, a mass participation point of view. And the more that the, 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 the greater the number and the, the colors going into the green and the, and the amber, it tells you whether there's going to be a bit of an oomph behind this move and if there isn't what that tells you then it doesn't mean that the move is not going to carry on whether to the long side or the short side but what it tells you is that there's been a slowing down of that move as a day trader especially if you're on the faster charts when the price slows down and it starts to almost grind to a halt your risk increases because you are then at the mercy of a sudden shock and that's what you don't want. Doesn't mean that the price isn't going to go higher. Doesn't mean your position. You just have to be aware. You have an awareness. It's it's like traveling in a car or uh, in a car, you know. And 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 when you're looking at a chart, you have no idea whether you're traveling at 80 miles an hour or you're traveling at eight miles an hour, especially with a with a time chart, because the candle just completes on whatever one minute, three minute, five minute, whatever it is. When you have a tick, when you can measure the ticks and you can see the ticks going through, you can see whether suddenly there's been, um, is everything slowing down to eight miles an hour or is it suddenly, you know, ramped up to 80, 100 miles an hour. And then that changes the, the market condition, if you like. And as it speeds up, then you have the possibility, not necessarily a danger, the possibility that you're going to get volatility coming in and you know, um, and for you, it may be a good thing because if, if you're on the right side of the market, but if you're on the wrong side of the market and you see this increase in speed and you think, oh, my goodness, you can actually use it and saying, I think this is, you know, this is going to catch me out in a minute. I better, you know, uh, reassess the position that I have. Um, the way the indicator works is basically the values that is that is uh, that it is giving. You can actually create a tick chart and put it at this setting if you're going to trade tick charts. I've used it in a slightly different way because I want to give, I want to show, uh, reveal what you know what is going on inside the market in terms of the the participation, in terms of um, how quickly. Uh, the, the buying and selling is actually going on. So I just, I've actually just put it at the bottom of a, a time chart, and it's been, re it's really, really interesting because you can see when there's a price support coming in, as we see within underneath the wicks of the candle, and, and the prices, you know, buyers are really trying to drive the price higher. You can see that turns to a green, and you have this effort that's coming in to push. The, the market higher. These two values, this is the actual, and what we've done is we've also put it to the, there's the closest FIB level. And what it does is if you are going to use it as a tick chart, which David does, by the way, it saves you having to change the values 
all the time because the change of values has to be done manually. And uh, the move that I've been that I've been actually looking at is this one here. It's again from a breakaway from the volume point of control. There's two potential uh, entries. One is a very aggressive entry, which is just away from uh, uh, from the VPOC here. There's a, a, a support platform here and a more conservative one. You say, well, actually, I'll wait until yeah, it breaks. But if it breaks through the support platform, then you know that is a potential entry. And what happens very often when a price breaks through a support or resistance, it will then go back and, and test it. And we can see here what we said on this candle. We had the green. We had a lot of effort to try and push it higher didn't get very far. Then it kind of died down a little bit. The the, the volume actually fell away. The colours went back, flip flop between the amber and the red. And then we had this little candle here, the effort to rise, the pivot. And that's really the nice move that as a day trader, you would look to capture. It's between strong resistance and strong support. And that is a very nice trade to the downside. And as we see here again, a little bit of more congestion, more buying coming in. We've got the, uh, going into green, a lot of effort coming in, um, not much going on here, uh, more green. And as I said, it's it's kind of a drift higher. That doesn't mean that, you know, this isn't going to go higher, but if it is going to go high, it is going to be a little bit of a grind. Using this in multiple time frames as well, we see the repeat here, we have the VPOC, you have the support here. This is the little uh, uh, piece of the trend that we have. And because we have the tick speeds going through on, on this is on the one minute, you can put it on all the time frames. You kind of know that you're running into a little bit of, a, of, a, of not doldrums, but things have slowed down now. So, you know, you if you've taken that to the downside, are you gonna go uh, long again? It looks like this, it is setting up but you may think, well, do you know what? I'm going to be a little bit patient. Let's see where this market is really going. And we are still trading with all these volatility candles. We are still within the spread of this candle. And if it's going to go higher, where's it going to go? Well, we've got price-based re uh, resistance here and we've got the VPOC back here. So if it's going to aim higher, this is where it is going to aim for, which is the volume point of control. And finally, before I pass over to David, we're going to look at these... Um, is multiple um, uh, looking at other markets the uh, the uh, the currency we have to look at and possibly the currency pair is the dollar the yen if once the yen turns over and starts to sell off pretty heavily that is going to be a nice signal to tell us that yes sentiment positive sentiment has come back into the market and you know it's just another little bit a bit of information to have to help us with our decision making and possibly with the, uh, you know, helping us to stay in the market as well. And obviously, if we go to investing quickly, let's have a look at what the uh, the VIX is up to. It's down to it's, down, it's below 15, and that was the other the other point the other day um, when we had this sell-off on Monday and Tuesday. The VIX near, really didn't shoot up. It went to 15, but it wasn't massive. You know, it wasn't like 30 or 40. That would really scare everybody. So you know, and if that keeps coming down, then the markets will generally creep higher and finally the thing I would like to say this morning I made an analogy to say because a lot of the traders uh, uh, write to me and make comments they're saying oh yeah no you, there's so much you know so much I've got to absorb it's all so overwhelming you know I can't cope you know you know how can I do it can you just give me you know give me something easy something quick you know three steps I just do one two three and the way I go and all I would say is yep fine you know i'm sure there's plenty of people out there who will sell you a nice quick uh, expensive or cheap system that is you know foolproof and guaranteed to work in every market condition etc etc but really the way you have to look at this is this and this is the analogy david and i have taken fly flying lessons in the past so we know what it's like to get into a little sort of Cessna plane and, you know, the ones with little propellers and you've got a few instruments and, and away you go. And they do actually get you up into the sky. We have a neighbour who has recently been promoted to captain of, of long haul flights. And, I, you know, you only go on the Internet and you see uh, 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 the dashboard that they have in an Airbus and in a 747. It is totally, totally overwhelming. But they fly the thing. And you will also see um, if you go to a site called uh, what's it called, David? Pilot's Eye. 
Pilots ITV, David's absolute favourite site. You will see the pilots there as they as they you know as they come into land and as and as they as they take off. They have all these instruments. They have all this information coming at them from the instruments. They are able to you know to 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 assimilate this uh, information. But what they also have, which is quite funny, is they have a clipboard, and on their clipboard they have a checklist. So. They have all this information, as you do, with the market information that you are being, you know, uh, that is coming at you every every minute of the day. Um, but what you do is you put your own, you get your clipboard together and you write down all the little bits of information from related markets, maybe bonds, maybe, uh, maybe the uh, forex market, whatever it is, just to make sense of what all the instruments uh, you know what all this information is telling you and by doing that you will then be able to kind of insulate yourself from all the other rubbish that's out there you know that you read oh the big short has to come you know this market's being up going up for so long this is not right this is you know in its 10th year well yes that is all correct but if the charts aren't telling you and sentiment isn't telling you that it's ready to roll over then you are going to be suckered in all the time because you because your 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 behavioural your bias will come in because you believe that this market has to fall. You will only ever look at setups which confirm your bias, and that is what you are really fighting against. And the reason I've gone into onto this bit of a riff is because I'm having a quite a detailed Twitter exchange with someone that I know who's in the city of London. He's a very 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 clever man who's the I know he's a quant and he's just a genius and he can't understand why retail traders have such a problem why they keep getting baited by the markets they see a short setup as you know in in the s p he's going to send me this chart of um eight weeks of hourly candles and he said look it's a perfect you know I said, i'm going to back to him and say yes first of all you don't use vpa you haven't got our in indicators and secondly that's what you're looking for you're only ever looking for a confirmation of what you believe should happen not what is actually happening so that's my con that's what i've got to say i think is you are yours everything ready darling yeah, yeah. you're on the s p at the moment so i'm going to stay stick with my nq uh see what's happening keep an eye on the on the uh, on the Japanese yen, keep an eye on the on the VIX. That's my little um, my little checklist. I'm also going to keep an eye on these um, on these uh, uh, on this tick speed here, uh, you know, and also on the colours. So, and I have to remember that when markets rise, it's always a bit of a grind. So I'll just pass over to Dave. Just show my screen and a very warm welcome and uh, good to have you here today. So um, uh, I haven't, I must admit, um, apologies, I was just uh, just on the charts. Are there any questions? Um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Um, what does FIB stand for? FIB is uh, Fibonacci. Um, and that's all that is. And it's not on the, I guess you're referring to it on the tick charts which I'll hop over to in a moment um, it's nothing to do with Fibonacci it's really we use it just as a mechanism to deliver a number that was would change less frequently against the actual tick because when you look at the actual tick speeds changing all the time they literally change second by second and you don't really want to be changing your charts that often I've said it many times before if I'm trading Globex in isolation I will tend to use the actual and I'll probably change them every few minutes because they won't change that much. Uh, and when I'm trading in the markets as we are now, where we have Globex and cash markets running in parallel, then I will use the FIB number. But it's n it's nothing to do with Fibonacci. It's not a it's not an interpretation of Fibonacci. It's just a mathematical way for us as a developer to deliver a number that was more stable and relatively close to the actual, not that far away, but one that was more stable. So it meant you didn't change your chart so frequently. I hope that answers that one for you. Don't think there are any other questions. Forgive me, I have my chat box closed when I'm doing this generally, so uh, I'm not ignoring you. It's just I'm just concentrating on what's going on. Um, 
I thought we'd start with the just the indices, and it's another. I mean, the last three days we've said it this morning. They have just been blinding. Uh, they've been days of almost perfection, I would say. If you tried to create uh, a trading day where it was purely driven by sentiment, you had gallons of volatility. All the markets were working in lockstep. You had bond yields, bond prices, risk currencies, risk markets, forex markets, all working together. You just had to pull it all together on a screen or multiple screens, and it was all there for you and underpinned with volume price analysis and the indicators. I mean, it, it, you, they don't come much better. I, can't, I, can, I can honestly tell you the days that we've had this week, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, today looks like it's going to be a bit of a grind. The last three days have been absolutely blinding. They're what we call the money days. Uh, those are the days you have to make big bucks. And that's what we've been doing because the market's been moving, but it's been moving with volatility, uh, real speed in the market. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to equate to the fact you've got to be light on your feet, but certainly you've got to be aware of the fact that when markets particularly are driven by, I am watching the charts, by the way, while I'm talking, while when markets are driven by um, Twitter and particularly those of Donald Trump, you can be assured of two things. First of all, they will react. And secondly, the prospect of any longevity from those comments is, is unlikely. So the market reacts. And then what you're looking for is, first of all, jump on board the reaction. And then secondly, jump on board the reversal, because rest assured, they will reverse. Uh, they're not going to last long. We've seen this so many times with Brexit over the last two or three years. You get an item of news comes out from Europe, UK, whatever it may be. Someone says something. The market responds, reacts. We've seen it so many times in the pound yen. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. The market jumps and then it reverses. And it's just you as a trader. And really, I suppose, in a way, it encapsulates what trading is about. You don't really care what the direction is. It's just being aware of it, being aware of what's caused it and being probably more importantly the fact that this is not going to last very long this is not a key piece of fundamental data this is not a shift in in monetary policy this is not some item of news which has some some ma major impact on the in the economy of a country it's a tweet for goodness sake it's a few words and you know for a fact it's going to reverse it has to that's what the markets do and it's driven by the market makers and the big operators this is the five minute across the across the three sisters. We've got the YM at the bottom. We've got the NQ in the middle here. And over on the right, we've got the ES. This is the Dow. The middle is the NASDAQ 100. And the uh, right hand uh, is uh, the S&P 500. And the reason I have them up, it's another facet, if you will, of related markets, because you're looking at related indices within the same market. Necess not necessarily. They're not going to diverge hugely. They do diverge from time to time. Occasionally, you get days where one is up and the other's down and vice versa. But the reason to have them up is just to get a different perspective on volume. You get a different perspective on price action. For example, at the moment, we have the volume point of control here on five minute on the YM. And on the ES, it's uh, oscillating around that as well. But on the NQ, it's not. And the fact that it's higher on the NQ is, is adding downwards pressure. But more importantly, if you're trading the NQ and you're not aware of what's going on on the YM and the ES, then you know this little piece of information is just giving you a, 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 a gentle reminder that those two indices, which are part and parcel of risk sentiment, are trading around the volume point of control in their own universe. So it just gives you another aspect to consider. I know, as Anna said, there are many many things that you have to look at when you're trading and it's a reason that you need multiple screens you have have to have all this information at your fingertips to make a logical common sense decision and this is just a very simple example of how powerful it is just within the same uh, sector of the market if you will these are the same indices they're trading you know it's a risk and it just gives you a different perspective from a technical perspective at any rate as to why the market has paused and how long it's like to pause there. It's all about perspective and it's all about putting all these little pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together. So that's where we are. I've got the um, ES on multiple time frames, I think. Yep, there we go. So this is just the S&P 500 we're looking at now. Uh, this is the 15 second chart. It's one I use a lot because I like to have that very fast time frame underneath, just giving me a heads up as to 
sentiment, what's going on, changes in in uh, direction, and what's coming up at me into the fast into the slightly slower time frames. This is the two, the five minute, the fifteen minute seems almost uh, laboured down here at fifteen minute when you move from fifteen second, sixty minute, and over onto the daily. Uh, and this was the huge buying we saw coming down here on the previous day, which we wrote about the on the day itself, and then uh, we had the reaction yesterday. Looks like we're going to have a, some sort of a doji today. You never know, you can never tell. You just have to trade what you see. At the moment, just pop some of these up full size. This is on 15. We've got volatility candle, so we've got had the reaction back inside the spread of the candle, which is fine. If that is going to carry on higher, the trend monitor is red at the moment. The trend line is diving, so it's pretty bearish at the moment, certainly on this particular time frame. But if it's going to carry on, we've got a platform below. We've also got a ceiling of resistance over here. In fact, we've got a cluster of two here. This is on the accumulation distribution. That one was tested on the previous candle at 31.12. Uh, we've got another uh, level above here. So this is based on price. And the volume histogram up here is associated with the volume point of control. And you use it in exactly the same way. Uh, because volume acts as support and resistance in the same way that uh, price does. Just go up onto the 60 minute. I've got the volume clicked off because I've got so much data coming in across the various monitors I've got here and all the rest of it. Um, you may be able to see the wick there, quite a deep wick to the lower body. Depending on the volume that comes in, we're into the uh, US session now, we're in. 15.50, so we're well over an hour in. Uh, so we can compare like with like. That was the first, uh, that was the heavy selling. And now we're starting to see buying coming into the market. And it depends on how strong that buying is. But in addition to that, again, it comes back to mul using multiple time frames. We're back at the volume point of control. So in terms of the 60 minute, uh, we're looking at possible congestion developing that region. Go up onto the 15. We've got a little bit of a window, but it's not much. You've only got five points there. This is starting to break higher. And if you're a scalping trader, that may be sufficient for you to jump in, take a few points out of the market and, and head for the hills. Trend monitors blue, trend lines rising, decent volume under those candles. Not much in the way of what, what I mentioned in terms of volume. The And obviously you'd look at a slower time frame, you go up onto the two minute maybe. Uh, what you're looking at, when you get to an, an area such as this where you've got low volume, then from a resistance perspective, that is going to play in exactly the same way as would a price-based region. This level up here, this very wide level, is extremely strong. The accumulation distribution indicator works on price, and what it does is basically looks at the number of times a level has been tested and held, and it represents that by painting the line thicker and thicker every time it's tested. So if this is tested 10 or 15, 20 times, it just gets thicker all the time. So areas like this are extremely strong and therefore will come into play. So if we get another 10 points up here, rest assured this level will become extremely important. Equally, when you're looking at uh, volume in the same way, you're looking at this region here as low volume. If the market manages to climb up to this region, then it should go through there fairly, fairly quickly because there's very light volume in that area to cause it to pause. In other words, there's no congestion point there. But as you get up higher here, we're going to hit uh, a congestion for sure. Why? Because we've got volume building here quite rapidly to the highest point here, which is the volume point of control itself on the yellow dash line. So if we got through here pretty quickly, rest assured the market is not going to move through quickly through here because we've got this great wedge of volume in sitting in here around the volume point of control. And the volume point of control itself will cause it to pause. So once you, the question you're always asking yourself as a trader is, is there enough in here for me to, to scalp a position uh, in terms of we're talking about three points here? Now, three points on the ES is worth having. Uh, I'm not saying it isn't. Three points on the uh, on the YM uh, would not be worth having. So it's all a question of perspective, which index you're trading. The uh, They all have different um, profiles, as you'll see from the tick uh, uh, charts that, or the tick charts, the number of ticks that go through. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis the the actual time frames, uh, the heaviest traders is the ES by a long, long way. You can get 10, 15, 20,000 ticks on a three, four, five minute chart, which is massive. But when you compare it to YM, be nothing like that. To see where this is going, very laboured as Anna said at the moment. There's no great, uh, great direction to the upside.
see what we can find elsewhere. Let's just have a quick look at, um, I just want to see what's going on in terms of the uh, yen. <clears throat> this is on uh, five minute. This is the indices. This is the currency indices now. This is the Japanese yen. This is the dollar index. We've got the euro down here. So we've got some decent euro selling in the market right now. And we've got some uh, quite nice pound buying coming in as well. So uh, that may well be reflected. Certainly, probably not so much in, in the pound yen, which is uh, a lot of pound buying. But the yen is not reflected then in terms of yen selling. So it might be better to have, have a look at cable right now because uh, there's some, a little bit of uh, dollar selling, but even that is not particularly strong. So there would be trends in certainly on the pound complex. That may be a poll that's come out. It could be someone said something, who knows? Um, so some decent pound buying there at the moment. But I was just looking at this up here, the yen not going anywhere at the moment, which is another reason that indices at the moment are in a bit of a lull. Just have a look at the currency future. I've got, this is the 6J, which is the, inverse of the dollar yen because currency futures are quoted inversely so this is yen dollar not dollar yen so if this is rising it's yen buying and vice versa if it's falling it's yen selling this is on the currency strength indicator this is on 10 minute it has been yen buying come to a bit of a pause just waiting for that to develop see if that's going to continue lower maybe get some uh, some further upside in the indices themselves just go back over, take a quick look, see what's going on. All pretty much the same, all very desultory at the moment. You can't have days like this every day. Well, it'd be nice, but we don't. Um, so you have to. It just goes back to, to you have to you have to make money on those big big move days when the market's really moving for whatever reason. Make money in those days because these are the days when it's much much more difficult to uh, to be consistently profitable. It's fine to scalp if scalping is is if, is, is is your cup of tea. And when I'm talking about scalping, I'm talking about on the very fast charts. Let's stay with them. Let's go back. I'll just have a quick look at commodities. Oil's all over the place today. Um, pretty bullish on oil, but it's uh, it's been an OPEC day. There's OPEC meetings going on. There's all sorts of talk about uh, targets and and. Uh, managing uh, oil inventory and all that sort of stuff and that's why it's so volatile huge volatile spikes two big spikes one to the upside bang down to the downside ton of volume coming in reversed off that as you would expect that's uh, what we expect to see same again here another one another trap move it's just a great opportunity for the big operators to trap everyone into weak positions all the time the volatility is triggered and the market instantly reverses back inside the spread and off we go again to the upside Gold is really just reflecting what's going on in uh, associated markets. It's not really going anywhere. It's pretty bearish at the moment, longer term at any rate. It's looking a bit weak. Um, and intraday, as you can see, and on the five minute, really not any great direction. Trying to crawl higher. That's on the one minute. Okay, there's nice channel building there. That's on oil. I was talking about uh, this aspect of price behavior this morning in terms of trading uh, sideways congestion phases and using options, the long straddle, particularly a directionless uh, strategy for uh, we're looking at the pound yen. Uh, in fact, you could apply that also to cable, I believe, on the, on the uh, congestion charts where it's been trading in a very narrow range. You're not sure what direction it's going to break. You have a feeling it's going to break positively, assuming the polls are correct in the UK at any rate. Um, I've actually got the um, I've actually got the spreads and the, the latest uh, betting uh, up there at the moment. I'll pull that up in a minute. Um, but in terms of breaking away from this particular congestion phase, this is just a nice example where you've got the very clearly defined ceiling and a floor. You've got ceiling in here. Very strong region. You can see how wide the line is. This is on the accumulation distribution, 58.95. Pretty tight range. You've got another level here that's building. These levels are constantly building and rebuilding the whole time. You've got very lightweight down here. This is very, very strong. And it's widening all the time. Constantly being pushed into and rejected, pushed into and rejected. If you broke through there, you as a scalping trader would then have a very nice position, a possible position to the upside purely because you've then got a nice platform of potential support below. You've got plenty of price, 
price congestion in beneath. And in addition to that, you've also got uh, very simple places to place your stop loss. You can either place it here or you can go deeper down below the VPOC, depending on your uh, risk profile, your money management, so on and so forth. But this is now building into a very nice level. And breakaway trading is, is one of those tactical approaches which does get a bad press from time to time purely because most traders who adopt it don't use uh, volume to confirm whether a breakaway is genuine or not. I'll just look at price action or various other factors. Just go on to the 15 second. Yeah, they use a mathematical approach. Okay, let's go up to five. On to coming up to the volume point of control. All very sluggish at the moment. And it's just a question of waiting and being patient. 15 minute coming up to the volume point of control. Waiting for this candle to close. Keeps pushing higher. Huge great wick now down here. A lot of barriers in the way if the market does break higher. A little low volume node here which will help but then you've got uh, price congestion coming in or price resistance coming in here rather and then you've got this big wedge of volume which is almost certainly going to come into play before you get anywhere near this region and as, almost as soon as you get to that low volume region you've got this massive uh, ceiling of uh, price resistance above as well. So you've got all sorts of obstacles in the way up here. If this is going to move higher then it's got to do so with some decent volume and if it doesn't then it's not going to go very far as simple as that. Okay, that's come in now. That's on 60 minute. There we go. So we've got some decent buying under there, a lot of volume under there, clearly. So there's there's you know, considerable volume bu uh, buying in that particular phase of price action. Let's widen that out. Probably see that a bit better there then. Okay, so the buyers have certainly stepped in here. And that candle is really just what well, it is. It's a representation of four 15-minute candles, and you can wrap those three around and look at it. This is a, obviously a two-bar reversal, but you've got these two on top. So you've got all this volume going into these four candles, which is represented with this 60-minute candle here. And that's whilst it's very simple to do with a two-bar candle or even a three-bar candle, it's not so easy when you've got multiple candles and multiple charts, which is why you have multiple time frames, because it just highlights all that information for you. Just head on to the tick charts. It'll be much the same there, and I suspect the tick count will be pretty low, which it is. Not too bad, actually, on the three minute. This is on the uh, one minute. This is uh, 9.87. So I'll just uh, this is what it was running a few minutes ago at 25.84. Uh, probably picking up speed a bit. Yeah, I can sense it now. It's coming in. It's one of the things you do to see when you're running on tick charts. You instantly get a perspective, you get a feel for, let's change that over to that one, that's, uh, that's decent, that's okay, that's fine. Uh, you get a sense and a, a, a feeling for momentum because these charts are non-time based. So when the market is fast moving, the chart will be fast moving. It's as simple as that, it's a direct correlation between the two. And when they're slow moving and sluggish, then you'll see it as well. What you see on a, on a time-based chart is you might see volatility when it's fast moving and you'll see the price oscillating around, but what it won't be doing, it won't be moving forward, and that's the difference. You'll see it moving forwards in terms of a tick chart, and it's, it's one of the reasons many traders like to trade tick charts, particularly for futures trading, particularly for index trading, not necessarily exclusively, uh, commodities as well. You can see up here on one minute, we've got uh, a, a big pickup in activity. We've gone green, so we've got a ton of, uh, and we've got a ton of volume coming in under that particular candle, certainly when uh, judged against what's gone on previously. There is some buying coming under that candle. We've got a wick to the lower body.
This is now stepped up to 10,946, so we'll just uh, move that one up. So the activity is picking up. Oops, sorry, put 10,946 minutes in, apologies. Let's put a T on. I'm not going to play ball now. <laughs> Change it to something else. Go 300 tick. That's it. Okay, I'm going to step right back down again now. It's gone 2584. 2584 tick. There we go. Okay. So there's a spike in activity and now we've died again. As I said earlier on, these numbers for a fast moving market, this is the ES, which is the most heavily traded. This is probably about right, but this one should be up in certainly on the five minutes should be up in the 10,000, 15,000, can go up to 20,000 when it's really fast moving. So it's all pretty sluggish at the moment. You can see it on the tick speed represented, represented with the, the color changes. We're going from, you know, we've got a lot of red around the place. Orange is fine. It's green and orange we're after all the time because that implies participation and decent tick count. And you can see how down here it's run, telling us we're running slow, slow, slow. This is all very sluggish at the moment. Got the volume point of control on here. We've got uh, the histogram. We've got the accumulation distribution. So we've got uh, all the same indicators. We've got the trend monitor down here. more levels building all the time volume point of control across all three in fact on all five charts now we've got the volume point of control so we're deep in congestion not going anywhere if we're trend trading this you know, it's just a question of being patient and waiting for the market to break one way or the other Let's see what the yen's doing. Not a lot. Pounds come off. Dollars weakening a bit, not a lot. Euro's reversed as well. oil is trying to rally got through that uh, very strong level there that's a nice platform very light uh, price resistance overhead and very light in terms of volume certainly on the one minute at any rate um, whether it'd be wise to trade this given the OPEC meeting going on and any statement coming out is likely to uh, have an instantly volatile reaction again You've got to make a decision on that. Depends how long you're going to be in there for. Keep an eye on this. Let's see if something comes off this. I haven't got away, just uh contemplating what's going on. Volume's not great on the up, 
This is on 15 second, bear in mind, but nevertheless, volume is, is comparative. So as long as you're comparing on the same chart, perfectly valid. <clears throat> Not particularly strong. Last one's very weak. Tiny volume on that last candle. Not going very far. That's okay, that's fine. And if you're going to take a position on this to the upside, then really what you're looking at is a move through this region here. 12, 12.50, 12.75. If we get through there, then you're into a low volume node and you've got a decent amount of uh, protection behind you or underneath you should that, uh, should that market reverse against you. If you're scalping this and looking to, to grab a, a point or two out of this particular index. Testing that level again. Quite interesting, isn't it? See how many times it's held. That's held again. And it's like um, um, Popeye and the spinach. The more he eats, the bigger his muscles get. Same thing with these levels. Okay, let's uh, see if it has another run. Is it trend monitors transition to blue? This is the classical transition. Bearish into dark blue, into dark red, dark blue, out the other side into bright blue. Trend lines rising. Uh, but the volume's falling away. We've got uh, volume rising, volume uh, price rising, volume falling. Yeah. Let's see if this is tested. If we get through it, then could be an opportunity to jump in and grab a point or two. Testing it again. Failed again. <clears throat> just stay with this chart just to uh, to see if this level continues to hold the price. Yeah. Yeah, there's doges and all sorts all over the place. Let's pop that down. Yeah, the uh, as Anna said, the the dollar and the yen are kind of moving in the same direction. Just go back to where are we comes from future there. Um, it's another. There we go. We've got the, the yen starting to sell off, which is uh, it should be positive for indices. But it's also selling off against the dollar, uh, which is why this particular uh, currency pair is not moving. But if the, uh, let's have a quick look at the indices as well. That's on 10. Can have a look on 5. What's happening on 5? Okay. Not huge. It's starting to roll a little bit. For a significant move, that needs to sell off quite sharply. Coming off that level, just capped back to the downside. Now we've got rising classic, uh, rising volume, falling price, which is indicative of weakness. A trend monitor is transitioning back into bearish. Trend lines diving through the fulcrum there. Lots of volume, doji candle, big legs to bottom, top and bottom. Not indicative of anything, it's just indicative of indecision again with lots of volume. So you just have to be patient and wait. And in terms of levels, if you were looking to, let's go up to this chart, probably a uh, um, if you were looking to take a position in this market on five minute, then from a personal perspective, I'd be looking for a break below this region and to the upside, certainly get through this. 
and probably all this other rubbish up here, probably up somewhere here at 22. And you might say, well, you've given up 10 points. Well, yeah, fine. Um, that could be 10 points of, of horrendous choppiness through here. May or may not be. What I'm looking for is to get into a position where I've got some reasonably clear water ahead of me. I don't particularly want to be trading through clag. And until this breaks away from the volume point of control and breaks away with de decent volume and gets clear of all this stuff, then the market is just going to congest further. Down onto 15, which is symptomatic of what's going on right now. Back onto the tick charts, sideways everywhere at the moment. Uh, this tick activity is okay. On three, that's fine, but it's very, very low on five, so it's just not following through. This is pretty low up here on one minute as well, 1597. <laughs> And that's where we are on the daily. Tiny little sliver of price action here. I don't think there's any major news to drive the market one way or the other. Oh, those, um, where are we? Here we are. These were the, I put these up this morning. This is, uh, this is a great site. This is for, for pound specific. This is, we have the election in a precisely uh, a week. 12th of December is the date. Uh, we will be trading that through the night because we always do because it's great fun. Lots of volatility, lots of uh, too good toe price action. So it's a, it's a great night to be trading. Well, I hope it will be anyway. And sorry, did you want to say something? No, just Mish's site as well, Mike Shedfield's site. Okay, do you want to do you want to reference that your side? Sorry, Anna just wanted to show your site, her side. This is political betting. This is what the spread companies, generally speaking, are showing at the moment. This is for. Um, uh, the number of seats, you can see 338, 344, 215, 221. This is up. This got down to sub 200 at one point. I think it was 195, 197, something like that. So there has been an increase here, but this has also increased, although they have been pretty stable over the last few days. Uh, polls are coming and going and, and all pretty much saying more or less the same thing. Um, so that's political betting. And these are the odds. Uh, in terms of the odds, pretty much around the 120, 125 region for a conservative majority. And Labour is running between 10 and, and 14 to 1, something like that. Um, so it just gives you a view on uh, where the market is likely to go post the election, assuming the, the, uh, the betting companies are right and the spread betters are right and the polls are more or less right. Then you know, it's a question of, of judging what will happen to the pound. The chances are it will strengthen, uh, probably strengthen across the complex. Um, there will be a lot of volatility, uh, but longer term it is like to strengthen. I think one, one company was quoting 140 something for cable at some point in the not too distant future. And then, as I said this morning, what will become important is not the politics. The politics will, will die away as Brexit is, is kind of put to bed, although not 100 percent, but it is it comes off the headline, if you will, and the volatility will dry a little bit. And then what will become important are the fundamentals, which will drive the currency uh, and the currency pairs. They will take uh, a much uh, greater part in terms of how the markets react when those news items come and go. Because in the last two or three years, they've played a very secondary role to that of Brexit. Yeah, I'm just going to pass you back to Anna for a moment. No. Okay. Yep. I'll just switch off for a minute. Thank you. Right. Uh, just very quickly back to my um, to my Nasdaq uh, uh, workspace, and it's really ho it's really quite horrible. Um, there's a lot of choppy price action we've saw and what have you. But actually, <clears throat> by if you look at the daily chart, 
not necessarily because of bias, but look at the candle that is actually being formed as we speak. It's sort of a doji. And that is telling us the kind of price action that is currently going on in the faster timeframes. When you see this like this, there is no, there is indecision. There is no firm direction. A doji, um, you know, a lot of traders like to say, oh, it's a reversal. Sometimes it can reverse, but really you should read it as a, um, a, a an indecision. It's it's what's called good, good two-way price action. It's only good if, you know, you've had a nice wide range, but this is actually looks a bit narrow. So down here on the one minute, this is this is the reaction. This is what you're seeing. This is horrible, absolutely horrible. But, you know, if you understand the uh, the the, uh, the the trading landscape, the the environment that you are uh, facing that you are currently in, it does really make life an awful lot easier. And going back to the 10 minute chart, going back to this volatility candle, this was a big move down. We've had the, the, the buying that came in here. We've got wicks to the bottom of these candles. The price is now over the volume point of control. There's also a very strong platform of support here. But it's a, it's, it's, when markets go up, it's a grind. It's a grind, you know, and it depends. And then whether you go in or not, it really depends on what kind of a trader. Are you a little bit more aggressive or you think, no, I'm going to be, I'm a little bit more conservative in my, um, uh, in my approach. The volume underneath here, you say, well, that's not an awful lot of volume underneath those, those wicks, but then it is very much distorted by this, this inrush that you always get um, at the open. So volume, the up down volume, you really have to read it in context and it is always relative. But just keep an eye on, the, on, on you know, what kind of candle is being formed on the daily chart and is there enough breadth and width and if you think, you know, you're, you're up for, you know, perhaps uh, taking uh, a cheeky long, as it were, fine. But you always keep an eye on, as I said, there's the yen going down, which is good. Uh, have a look at the VIX. I don't have, I've got the VIX on another, on another screen. Is that, um, is that, uh, you know, is that settling? Is that going down, which is what we want? Um, the NQ and the ES, they're called the two sisters. Uh, are they doing, you know, are they more or less tracking each other? That's good as well. Or is there a bit of divergence? What is the sentiment? It's all these little things, these little checklists of things. You just make your own. Don't try and put too many in at the beginning. Just, you know, one or two, just to keep an eye on multiple time frames. If this is too many time frames, you know, for heaven's sake, have more than one. <laughs> no, don't, uh, you know, don't just rely on the one chart. And um, going back to my little chum on Twitter, He's uh, he's been looking at eight uh, eight weeks worth of one hour charts, and he says, oh, you know, there are all these short possibilities, and you know, and traders have been uh, you know chopped off at the knees. Well, I'm going to have a look, but the, 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 my, I've got two questions. The one hour chart uh, uh, is that your benchmark chart, or is that the chart that you're looking to take the trade on? Therefore, if it is, you should be benchmarking it against something else. There would have been opportunities for shorts in the last eight. Eight, eight weeks, but you know the the overall uh, uh, move, the trend is is the indices are still be are still going higher, and it's you know it's always wanting. And I don't know what kind of indicators and uh, what kind of uh, tactic he was looking uh, to take to the market. And um, on tactics, when you look at a chart, let's have a look at the uh, at this one here. And what you have here, you have a, a, a consolidation phase. You know, what is the what tactic can you can you use on this chart? Well, you know, it is going to have to be some kind of some kind of breakaway. Uh, you know, look at the levels, reversals off of strong levels of support and resistance. This is a very very strong level of support under here. The, the um, these are price based. Uh, uh, support and uh, resistance indicator. So the thicker this this line becomes, the stronger that level becomes. This is uh, volume based, and so we know when price you know gets to it, it did here. It, it does go through. Sometimes you know it does go through. They're not sort of you know rods of steel, but you can be sure that you know the price will will uh, attempt. You know, will it, generally it will hold. If it doesn't hold. 
and it's a true breakthrough uh, from that, then it'll be reflected down here. You need you need, need activity, you need volume, you need lots of volume to drive that price either higher or lower. Right, the British pound, given that uh, we've got the election next week, and if uh, a British pound is something that you are looking to trade, then this is a really, really good site. I've uh, put it up on Twitter. It's, it's moneymovine.io. His name is Mike Shedlake. If you just uh, uh, Google Mike Shedlake, he calls himself Mish. He has done, um, he does an amazing uh, analysis of all the polls. And essentially what he's saying is, is we're at the point now in this election where the the leaders you see here is between seven and fifteen percent, and I think there is actually one poll which he has taken out because it is so far off uh, the scale. Opinion, um, I think it puts the Tory lead at fifteen, uh, which it was down from nineteen, but he's kind of eliminated that because it would distort the figures. And basically, he's saying if it's between the seven and the fifteen, then we're on for some kind of majority. Tomorrow, he's doing a very detailed analysis on the seat by seat basis. The pound has been going up. The pound has been uh, very, very positive, very, very strong. What that can mean is that, you know, if it does happen, um, then it will probably sell off because the price is being baked into the move, as it were. So that's one option uh, of looking at the pound. And of course, if this is all wrong, and uh, you know the, there is no majority. There is a hung parliament, or one of the other parties uh, gains a majority. Then you know you can probably uh, you can probably take that the, there's going to be lots of volatility, lots of selling, um, and then it all depends on how bad it is for whoever is um, has uh, declared the winner. And my my own personal take of what we think the the result is going to be is we're going to be staying up. There is one constituency. Have to remember which Sunderland it is. But it's in Sunderland, and last uh, when we had the Brexit um, referendum, it was the first. It, it prides itself on being the first constituency to report. It, it there's a kind of race, and it comes out, and you know they count the votes and what have you. And that went to that voted. It was the first, and it voted for Leave. And my words to David were, "That's it. Leave have won." And the reaction in the, um, you know, by the commentators and what have you, oh, can't possibly be right, can't possibly be right. Again, confirmation bias, refusing to accept that possibly their preconceived views and attitudes may be wrong. And as traders, we really, really have to, uh, you know, steer clear of anything like that. Right. David, can I pass back to you now, darling? Is that okay? Yeah. Right, that's my bit on, 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 on Brexit. We are actually back next Thursday, the day of the election. Should be fun. And uh, we're actually going to stay up all night, aren't we, David? Yeah. yeah. I'm trading. I think we're actually, we're actually, we're actually going to trade. Why not? It's, uh, it's, uh, it, it should be fun. And trading should be fun. Oh, and sorry, one question. Uh, let's have a look here. Who is it? That's um, Michael. Um, Michelle. Um, sorry, is it always this way that doll and dollar has influence? No, it's the the yen. The yen is the yen is the currency that um, if it's being bought, then we know that sentiment is not good. So the the markets is selling equities. It's it's you know no one wants to take any risk if the uh, if the yen is being sold, then uh, we know that. At, the moment this is the way it's working correlations do break eventually but at the moment if the yen is being sold it is good for risky assets of which indices and equities are one the dollar yen as a pair you can use as a proxy for this sentiment uh, it's all explained in my books available on amazon and those of you who are students of the uh, program, well, it goes, we go into great details in the program on this. And I have to say, although it's a Forex program, there is much in there that is applicable to whatever you trade. And Lisa, I see you, you're going to go you're trying to, uh, but really, uh, with the indicators, if you email uh, Jonathan, that's helpdesk at quantumtraining.com, he'll make sure that you've got your... Um, uh, your up-to-date uh, uh, versions of the indicators, and I will pass back to Dave. Thanks, darling.
I'm just going to switch screens again. Uh, there we go. Nothing much has changed. Uh, still trading in a pretty tight range. Up and down, up and down, up and down. So I think that is where it's going to be for the next wee while. Uh, the market's gone for a while, so uh, we trade uh, in the evenings anyway. Um, it's actually a nice time for us in the UK to be trading. It's evening. Um, and it's just a very pleasant time to have the fire on and uh, be trading away and making money. It's just very, very pleasant. But as David said uh, in these in the comments section, these markets, if you're trading these markets, you've got to be patient and you've got to set your levels up and you've got to know where you want to get in. And more importantly, looking at the chart and deciding whether it's worth the risk that you're taking, putting on the table. Sorry, I'm just getting the chat box out of the way. All over the place. Go away. There we go. Um, and it's looking at, uh, you know, particularly at support and resistance. You've got a nice platform here. You've got a ceiling in here. You know, is that sufficient for you if the market breaks the downside? Yeah, quite possibly. Uh, you've got low volume here. You know, you've got a, a, a breaking away from the volume point of control. Volume's falling away, and exactly the same to the upside. It's it's a question of putting those levels together when the market's moving sideways. Whatever your chosen time horizon, pick out the levels, decide whether they're worth taking the risk. Uh, given that the market is not moving with momentum for the time being and, and it's a question of being light on your feet, jumping in and out, it may not suit you. If you're a much slower term trader, if you're looking at anything beyond sort of five or ten minutes, then it's it's a question of sitting on your hands, waiting and being patient and maybe not trading today uh, because the opportunities are just not being delivered. I think we've done all the questions. Just have a quick chat yeah thanks david have a good evening yourself too um thank you for coming along everyone i hope you've enjoyed it in terms of where to find further information about everything you can find it all here that's the uh, political betting that's the trading floor on the uh, on the quantum education program you can find all the details here quantumtradingeducation.com it's a complete module i know this is non forex specifically but as anna said a huge amount of the data in here and the the information is really specific to trading yes there is forex specific stuff but if you're trading any market you've got to be aware of what's going on in related markets anyway so you can find all the details there in terms of the indicators you'll find them all here trade stations coming soon working on that not going to be uh, certainly before the end of the year be early part of next year when those are all released it will be for trade station global and trade station securities trade station global is the um, partnership between TradeStation and Interactive Brokers. If you have an Interactive Brokers account, you'll find you'll be able to uh, drive TradeStation using the Interactive Brokers data. And that's what we're developing the indicators on as well. So you have that as an option. It's an option to trade Forex through TradeStation, uh, which is not available through, or certainly through the brokerage account anyway, through TradeStation Securities. So if you want more information on that, just click the banner here. There's also one on Anna's site, and that'll uh, give you more information on those two. Currently got MT4, MT5, Ninja, and also TradingView. Uh, all the indicators are supported 24-7, 365 days of the year. It's all included. We don't charge you for support. We don't charge for upgrades. or the, It just comes free. Once you've bought an indicator, that's it. You never, ever pay us any more. It's as simple as that. And if you invest in the complete package, you get all future indicators we develop free of charge. And you can find Anna's details over on annacooling.com, all the books and all the latest blog posts up there as well. If you have any questions, more than happy to answer them, Anna at annacooling.com, David at quantumtrading.com. Hope you've enjoyed today. We look forward to joining you next week, which will be an interesting day given the uh, politics and enjoy the rest of the trading week. Maybe the markets will pick up a little bit later this evening. Hopefully we'll get another good solid day tomorrow and uh, have a good weekend and we will see you back next week. Thanks so much for coming along. We do appreciate it and we will see you all again soon. Bye for now.